Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night, checked the time and felt, oh, that's so reassuring, great. I feel so much better knowing that it is 2 a.m. Probably not. When it comes to the time at night, ignorance is bliss. Hope you're doing fantastic today and super nice having you back and a big welcome if you are new to the channel. Uh, it was it yesterday or today? It was yesterday. I um, randomly saw a video uh, by Martin Reed, my good friend and colleague, and he brought up this good point uh, that I just felt I, I, I just got to, uh, you know, make a similar video with kind of the same point, which is the following. I, I, we talked about before about like clock watching in general is not a good thing. Uh, affects some people more than others, but I think that the really, you know, the, what really hit it home was this question, you know, have you ever checked the time at night and felt that that was reassuring, helpful, and that made it easier for you to sleep? I bet very few of you say yes, you know? There's always outliers, you know, for some for some people, clock watching is not a big issue, for, but for many it is, and it's usually, as, as many of you know, one of two scenarios either you have not been able to fall asleep and you know you've been tossing and turning and you decide to check what time it is and it is you know 3 42 a.m and you have to be up by 6 30. in that scenario nothing comes good out of that you know you just do the math you know i have like three hours left to sleep i haven't slept a wink increases stress and makes it you know nearly impossible to sleep those you know remaining few hours another scenario uh, you know you fall asleep wake up suddenly and you, you you feel like i probably was asleep a good three hours check the time and it was only 42 minutes you know classic also makes you very stressed and uh you know increases your anxiety and makes it hard for you to fall back to sleep so whether you have fallen asleep and wake up, check the time, or whether you haven't fallen asleep and decided to check the time, almost never, like, yeah, I, I can't really think of any scenario, but I'm just gonna say always, uh, almost anyway, almost never a good idea to check the time, you know? So a good approach in general is the one where you, you decide you're not gonna check the time after, you know, 10.30 p.m. or 11 p.m. or whatever it is, and then just have a wake up time that you set your alarm for and, and beyond that, just go by feelings. You know, you go to bed when you feel like you should go to bed, when you feel sleepy, eyelids heavy, etc. And you know, if you wake up and you feel like you can't fall back asleep, then you know, leave the bed, etc. But don't check the time. Um, hope this little insight was helpful. I have a couple of shout outs and then I wanna finish off it's Friday, and I'll finish off for this week with a super nice comment from Ellen on, on, on yesterday's episode. So the little shout outs here, I wrote them down. Reagan, who I connected with today on, on Facebook, who has been scared that, uh, I believe it's a, I believe Reagan is he, so he has has had a health, health scare um, uh, regarding SFI, you know, uh, sporadic fatal insomnia. And um, as I told you, Reagan, if you're listening to this, I don't see any reason you shouldn't believe that you will reach that statistical age of, you know, 82 years old and you have like decades ahead of you and thinking about, you know, where you'll be in five years and 10 years and 20 years and 40 years, you know, imagining, dreaming of that maybe will help you like not focus so much on this very instant and, you know, the, the preoccupation and anxieties you have today. Uh, and another shout out to Naomi, who I've talked a lot with on uh, via email yesterday and today. And um, uh, we've talked a lot about like recently about the time, like how can I get or how can I get from this amount of time to that amount of time, or do people get stuck in this amount of time, etc. And the message uh, that I conveyed to Naomi today, uh, and Naomi, if you're listening, uh, I'm, I'm talking to you, <laughs> is the more you focus on quantity, quality. You know, just feeling better, sleeping better, quality. The more you focus on quality, quantity will come. Quantity will come because you become more like non insomniacs, meaning you overestimate how much you sleep. You think you sleep seven hours. Maybe you don't, but it feels like you do. And that's all that matters. And finally, Callie, who I believe is brand new to the channel and uh, left a comment on episode one, 
just starting to explore CBTI Cali. Hope you're doing really well and let me know if you have any questions. And then finally, as mentioned, it is Friday. So uh, yesterday I posted this uh, episode on, you know, a Bodhisattva, a little bird from like um, Buddhist philosophy. And the Bodhisattva is somebody who, you know, can reach nirvana, decides to stay in this world. And I, I use it as an analogy for, you know, somebody who has overcome insomnia, doesn't leave the world of insomnia, but stays on to help others. And this is her comment, which we will end this week with. Ellen writes, love this. And possibly Buddha himself was the ultimate insomniac. He literally was the awakened one, reportedly only sleeping an hour a day, although he and his followers did not view this as uh, this very limited sleep as a negative. And with all beings, all beings suffering one way or another, even those who sleep well, plenty of opportunities to help others as well as we can. On the last two totally sleepless nights I had, I realized that I, um, I didn't have the power to will myself to sleep, but I had the power to shape my day into the best possible one, regardless of my sleep. So instead of just going through my day on autopilot, I was consciously pushing myself to, to be my best. It turned out I did better those days when, and then when I got a good night's sleep, because I was determined to be grateful for the good stuff, accept the bad with equanimity, and have compassion for others, since this has taught me you never know what battles someone is fighting. Both days I connected in a deeper, more authentic way with fellow classmates who were taking yoga. One actually thanked me after class for taking for, ta uh, for talking with her and reassuring her since it was her first time, set her at ease. I couldn't believe that I had the power to do that even after not sleeping, so all of us whether recovered, recovering insomniacs, or still struggling, can vow to help anyone we can and in the process be helping ourselves. Thought that was a super nice comment. And with that, we'll finish off for this week uh, and uh, hope to have you back here a Sunday or Monday. One of those days I'll post a video for sure. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment. Um, and uh, uh, you can also connect with me, of course, on, uh, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, or leave an e send me an email, daniel at insomniainsight.com. Hope to see you back here real soon. Have a good weekend.